Hello, my name is Daryl Wildberg. And I have to tell you right off, this video, the following video, is not approved by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society in New York or Pennsylvania. It's not approved by those nine faithful members of the governing body located there in Warwick, New York. And it's not approved by uh, any local body of elders. I don't work for the elders, I don't work for the governing body, and I don't work for the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. All 8.6 million Jehovah's Witnesses work for Jesus Christ. He's our leader. And if you want scriptural reference to that, check out Matthew 23, 10. Today, we're going to talk about Armageddon. Uh, many uh, folks have a problem with the termination, uh, the uh, determination of the world, many people have a problem with this great battle that will one day take place. It's only mentioned one time in the Bible, and it's called Armageddon or Armageddon. And many have this question: uh, Will Armageddon begin in Israel? What does the Bible say? Now, the Bible describes Armageddon not as a regional conflict, but as a global war fought between all human governments and God. Expressions inspired by demons go out to the kings of the earth, of the entire inhabited earth, to gather them together to the war of the great day of God the Almighty. They gathered them together to a place that is called in Hebrew, Armageddon. Revelation 16. 14 and 16. Now the word Armageddon or Armageddon comes from the Hebrew word Armageddon, Armageddon meaning mountain of Megiddo. Now Megiddo was a city in the territory of ancient Israel and for that reason some people believe that Armageddon will be fought in Israel. However, neither the region of Megiddo nor any other area in the Middle East is big enough to hold the kings of the entire inhabited earth and their armies. Uh, there are three or four million in the United States, there's two or three or four million in China, Russia has a couple million, India, all these places have so many million, it's not possible for all these kings to be gathered at Megiddo. Now the book of Revelation was written in signs or in symbolic language. We see that in Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. Please turn with me there in your Bibles to Revelation and we're going to consider uh, Revelation 1 and verse 1. And keep in mind that this uh, scripture also disproves the Trinity. And it reads, Revelation 1, 1. A revelation by Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his slaves the things that must shortly take place. And Jesus sent his angel and presented it in signs through him, and the angel to his slave, John. And of course, John would then write this account. Now, John was on the Isle of Patmos, and this account was written in 96 CE or 96 AD. And John was a prisoner of the Isle of Patmos. <clears throat> so, if we check out, you can check out to Revelation 19:11 through 16 and Revelation 19:19 19, 19 through 21. The Bible assures us that God will not allow the earth to be destroyed. No, you see, to, my, to find out more, you can read an article here on JW.org. Will the earth be destroyed? You can write that down. Pause for a minute. Write that down. Will the earth be destroyed? Because, see, God made a promise in Genesis, in his heart, that he would never again deal every living thing a blow as he had done in the flood. And he also uh, concluded that the earth would remain forever. So, <laughs> to learn more about what the Bible says regarding Armageddon, you can read the article at jw.org, What is the Battle of Armageddon? And to find out what events the Bible says will occur before the Battle of Armageddon begins, 
you can go to jw.org and read the article, What is the Great Tribulation? Were events in modern Israel foretold in the Bible? Uh, you can find that answer in the article, Does Bible Prophecy Point to a Modern State of Israel? Will the Earth Be Destroyed? Also found on jw.org. What's the Bible's answer? No. No. Planet Earth will never be destroyed, burned in fire, or replaced. The Bible teaches that God created the Earth to be inhabited forever. In fact, the Bible clearly says in Psalm 37, 29, and if you want to take a moment, you can turn with me there, and that's in the book of Psalms. We're going to consider Psalm 37, 29. Uh, now, this is an interesting uh, pronoun statement. It's an interesting statement, but it's also profound. It, 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 it tells us what happens at this point in time for the earth. What will become of the earth? What will become of the righteous? Now, a lot of people think that the righteous who die will go to heaven. And, of course, the wicked or the unrighteous will go to the other place. There is no other place. There is either here on the earth for the righteous or it's destruction for the righteous, for the unrighteous. There's no other place. There's two roads. One leads to life forever and the other leads to destruction. But here in Psalm 37, 29, Jehovah God provides, the righteous will possess the earth and they will live forever on it. Don't you think it would be kind of difficult to live on the earth forever and in heaven at the same time? No, you see, if God wanted you in heaven, you'd be an angel. <laughs> and that's not to say that only angels will be in heaven because there's some humans that are going to heaven, but that's a different topic for a different time. Uh, in, in, in Psalm 104.5, it says that God has established the earth on its foundations it will not be moved from its place forever and ever. Okay. Ecclesiastes 1.4 1, Ecclesiastes 1, says the earth remains forever. And in Isaiah 45.18, the one who formed the earth, its maker who firmly established it, did not create it simply for nothing, but formed it to be inhabited. <clears throat> Again, Isaiah 45.18. Will humans ruin the earth? Now, many think that because of the, all the problems with pollution and uh, fossil fuels and, and all these, that the earth will eventually be destroyed by humans. Well, let me assure each and every one of you, God will not allow humans to ruin the earth completely by pollution, warfare, or any other means. There's going to be no nuclear holocaust. That's not going to happen. Rather, he will bring to ruin those who ruin the earth. Now, please pl please turn with me to, Reve to the book of Revelation. And we're going to consider uh, Revelation uh, chapter 18. Revelation 11, verse 18, not Revelation chapter 18. And when we read there, we have to set this up for you. It's talking about the 24 elders previously and how we all thank God, the Almighty who is, who was, and will always be ruling as king. Now, when we say king, Jehovah is the ultimate king, but there's a co-king that he's appointed, and that's Jesus. Jesus has been appointed king. He's a co-regent or co-king. And it says that, in verse 18, it says, But the nations became wrathful. Please follow along. And you can read this in your own Bible. Basically the same. I'm using the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. But all the, all the translations say the same thing, the versions. But the nations became wrathful, and your own wrath came. And the appointed time came for the dead to be judged, and to reward your slaves, the prophets 
and the holy ones, and those fearing your name, the small and the great. Now, now get this last statement here. And to bring to ruin those ruining the earth. Now, if God were going to destroy the earth, technically they would be helping God destroy the earth if they're ruining it. <clears throat> but that's not the case. So we see that God won't allow humans to destroy this world. You see, Jehovah God will replace human governments with his son being king, and his son will rule this earth from heaven. Jesus doesn't have to come down here to rule the earth. He can rule the earth from heaven. And, of course, these human governments have been unable to protect this earth or humankind. You know, we've had 6,000 years of human uh, government, and not a single government has been successful. I think there's nine forms, if I'm not mistaken, of government. Monarchies, uh, dictatorial, republics, democratic, what have you, communist, uh, socialist. But God's going to protect this earth and rule it with a perfect heavenly kingdom. And of course, Jesus is going to sit. And we read about that kingdom, if you would, please turn with me to Daniel. And we're going to consider uh, Daniel chapter 2. So please turn with me there to Daniel. And we're going to consider chapter 2 and verse 40. Now this again is talking about a future time. It's a prophecy that Daniel was given. Uh, Daniel was a very desirable man to God. In fact, the angel informed Daniel that he was very desirable to God. And it reads, Daniel 2, 44. In the days of those kings, today, future, but today, soon, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. And this kingdom will not be passed on to other people. It will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms, and it alone will stand forever. So you see, here it is talking about this future time that God's going to set up this kingdom and this kingdom is going to crush all the worldly kingdoms, and it's going to stand forever. Isn't that a pleasing thought to know that God's going to take this all in hand in hand? And of course, we're told to pray for that kingdom in Matthew 6, 9 through 10. The Lord's Prayer, you've all said it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy government come, kingdom is synonymous with government. Thy will be done where? On this earth? as it is in heaven. So how can his will be done on earth if he destroys the earth? You see how you have to allow the Bible to interpret the Bible. Now that kingdom will be ruled by God's Son, Jesus Christ. Isaiah 9, 6, and 7, where it says that the rule will be on his shoulders. The rulership. When on earth Jesus exercised miraculous powers over natural elements. Remember when he calmed the storm? Hush, be quiet! Mark 4, 35-41. As the king of God's kingdom, Jesus will exercise full control over earth and its elements. He will recreate or renew conditions on earth, making them similar to those that ex existed in the Garden of Eden. Matthew 19, 28. Luke 23, 43. Now some will ask, doesn't the Bible teach that the earth will be burned in fire? No, it does not. Such a misconception often comes from a misunderstanding of 2 Peter 3, 7, which reads, please turn with me there, 2 Peter 3, 7. 2 Peter 3, 7 reads, The heavens and earth that now exist are reserved for fire. Now consider two important points that help us understand the meaning of those words. Number one, the Bible uses the terms heavens earth and fire to refer to more than one thing. For example, Genesis 11.1 1 says all earth continued to be of one language. Here, earth refers to the human society. 
The next context of 2 Peter 3, 7 indicates the meaning of the heavens, earth, and fire mentioned there. Verses 5 and 6 draw a parallel with the flood of Noah's day. On that occasion, an ancient world was destroyed, yet our planet did not disappear. Instead, the flood wiped out a violent society of earth, or earth, or governments, humankind. It also destroyed a kind of heavens, the people who ruled over that earthly society. Thus, wicked people were destroyed, not our planet. And of course, Noah and his family survived the destruction of that world and inhabited the earth after the flood, Genesis 8, 15 through 18. And you'll see there in Genesis 8, if you read that chapter, you'll see there where God actually promised in his heart that he would never again deliver every living thing of all the animals of blow as he had done on account of man. Because why? Because man's heart is evil from his youth up. We have evil thoughts. We do evil things. Now, similar to the waters of the flood, the destruction of fire of Second Peter 3, 7 will bring an end to the world of wicked people, not the planet Earth. And God promises new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness is to dwell, Second Peter 3.13. Well, a new earth or new human society will be ruled over by new heavens, see? Or a new leadership ship in, in heaven, in God's kingdom. See, under the rule of that kingdom, the earth will become a peaceful paradise. And that's found in Revelation 21, 1 through 4, where it talks about what Jesus will have done. You see, when Jesus was on the earth, he performed many miracles, as did his apostles. But did those miracles really extend forever in, in, in the people that he fixed? The crippled that he cured? The lame? The deaf? The blind? He even brought back those that were dead? Did that solve their problems? No. So why did Jesus do it? Well, they benefited because they got to spend a little more life on this earth and they got to experience what health was about but he did that for you and me you see jesus performed all those miracles to show you and i that he has the power to cure every disease known to man including the mental disease of wars and all these different fractions of fractured spirits, murder, death, crime, all these things. Jesus controlled. He proved then on a small scale of what he will do one day on a large scale. Isn't that comforting a comforting thought a comforting thought that Jesus would one day cure all who ail? And he will control the elements. That's why he quested or uh, crushed the fire the the fire of uh, the inclement weather they were having be quiet he said to the storm and it succeeded that's the point what Jesus did on that small scale back then he's going to do on a large scale you can be there please stay tuned for part two of this it just gets more interesting now thanks for watching this video and we ask that read the scriptures and go to jw.org for additional information nobody can say it better than the faithful slave except God himself in the Bible and all the faithful slave does and as well as all 8.6 million Jehovah's Witnesses is we're kind of like guides and we kind of take you through there but we allow God to interpret God so thanks again for watching the video. Have a great day.